Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Mo here. Uh, welcome to the session two of Hour of Code. Um, now, if you're not familiar with the Hour of Code format, uh, really it's just about, uh, we'll take uh, the first 20 to 30 minutes, uh, typically in this live session, uh, and then we'll, we'll learn a coding or a programming concept. And then if you choose the second half an hour, you can actually go and do the assignment that we'll give you at the end, okay? Now that's completely optional, but it'll help you kind of stay on track. So uh, I, it's highly recommended, okay? And it shouldn't take you more than 20 to 30 minutes to complete that uh, either by yourself or with your parent. So again, welcome to session number two of the Hour of Code. Um, just as a recap from the last Hour of Code, which was our first session, uh, in that Hour of Code, we actually talked about what programming was, right? So foundationally, what does it mean to write a program? Uh, and so we were talking about how, just again, as a review, that programming is simply giving something or someone instructions, right? So just like uh, if someone gave you a set of instructions on a piece of paper, it's written in a language, uh, which there are many different types of programming languages. Um, but found fundamentally, programming, if you understand certain concepts, moving from language to language is not as hard once you understand uh, how to speak to a computer or to a robot, right? Um, now on Club Oasis, we do like to uh, do hands-on, a lot of hands-on activities. And so, especially for young learners, we really encourage you to have some sort of a physical device that you can program that's able to either move around or control a robot. Um, but you can also do some programming in a browser that controls some lights and things like that. So you can get a good idea of uh, how those instructions translate to actual actions, right? For, on a, for a computer or a robot. So next, we're gonna get into um, this little presentation that I've put together. And I want these to be as interactive as possible. So if you see on the right-hand side there, you have a chat window that you can type into at any time. And, and occasionally there'll be opportunities for me to bring people up on stage, if you will, virtually. Uh, we have that ability to either, uh, now you don't have to turn your camera on if you're shy, but if you wanna lend your voice to maybe answering some of the questions that I have, that'll help out and that'll kind of help it to be a little bit more interactive, okay? So let's go into uh, my PowerPoint presentation here um, about, um, today's topic, which is called, if this, then that, okay? Now, we word it like that because it pretty much explains the type of mindset or the sequence that you need to think about, right? Which is very popular in programming, especially if we're talking about robotics and if we wanna make a robot more autonomous, meaning that it can move and do things by itself. So we wanna understand this concept that we call, if this, then that, and we'll talk about what exactly that means. So let me share my screen here. Okay, so, so again, like I said, this is session number two of the Hour of Code and it's entitled, If This, Then That. Okay, so what does that mean? That basically means if this happens and this can be many things, then I want this, then I want that to happen, okay? If this happens, then that. And we'll talk about that on the next slide, exactly some examples of how if this, then that is uh, works, okay? So um, a good deal of programming, especially again for young learners and robotics, if we're talking about robotics and things that young learners can program, involves taking inputs and then producing a certain output. Okay, so that means that if something happens on the left, so if you look at the, um, the inputs over here, all of these on the left-hand side are what I call inputs, okay? These are things that happen, they're inputs, okay? Then they, they go into these things here in the center column, and we'll talk about these in a second, right? And then they output something over here in the right-hand column, okay? So these are the inputs, here, something happens, right? And we'll talk about that in a second. And then we have outputs here on the right, okay? So 
as you can see in the background here, um, I have really, which is like an illustration of a brain, okay? And this is kind of where exactly uh, all of the programming uh, happens, right? Or all the processes that a program uh, controls, right? So just like in a human brain, right? So let's let's take a look at some of the human things here, okay? Some of the human inputs. So let's say I put my hot finger onto a stove and that comes into us as humans, then there's a certain output here, okay? So, so for instance, so, and I want you guys, and the reason these squares are blank, <clears throat> excuse me, is because I want you guys to give me an answer, okay? Or what you think that output would be. So if I put my hot finger on the stove, what will be the output of that? After it goes into my brain and I process it, what do you think? What's the action that I put out? If I put my finger on a hot stove, what's the action? And you can write it in on the right there. Ouch. Good, <laughs> Good right? That's one, right? Let me uh, see if I can... Uh, So we said, ouch. Okay, what else? What else could happen? Scream or cry? That's right. But probably what's the thing that, you, um, along with screaming and crying, that you would probably do? So that your hand's not hot anymore, what would you do? Well, what does your brain tell your body to do? Go ahead and put it in the side there. Put it in water, right? But even before you put it in water, you want to pull your finger back, right? You pull your finger, I'll just say finger off, right? <clears throat> That's right. So it's almost, you don't even think about it. If you touch something hot, your hand just kind of pulls back from it, right? That's a reflex, right? So that's, but that happens, that process of, of thinking, and it happens pretty quickly, uh, that process of thinking happens here in your brain, okay? But you've been programmed in a way to think about like how to react based on the input. So if I put a hot finger on into my, and then my brain, I process that. And this is similar to how computers and robots process it. And then I have an output, which is to pull my finger off or to scream or, or yell out, okay? Um, so let's try another one when we're talking about human beings here. So if you eat something spoiled, now this is something you probably can't even really control, but your body controls it, right? Because it's programmed to work a certain way. So if you eat something spoiled, what happens? What's the output of that? If you eat something, you spit it out, right? But what happens if you actually uh, eat it and it goes into your stomach? What, what happens? Something that you really can't control, but, but your body controls or your brain controls. You gag, right, potentially, that's good. But let's say it gets down into your stomach, then what happens? And your stomach starts to rumble. You throw up, that's right, you vomit, right? And this is, and I'm, and I'm talking about this one because you don't, you don't, you can't really think of it like that, right? You don't say, hey, stomach uh, or hey, body, throw up, right? Typically, if we, if we wanna throw up, or because we've eaten something that's spoiled, then that kind of happens automatically, right? But it's been programmed into your body to do that, okay? So that's a, another example of how um, programming works in the human body, right? And so the human, okay? So now some of you on here, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Instagram. Let's go to Instagram and look at some inputs and figure out some of the outputs from that, right? So let's say we double tap on a picture on Instagram. What happens? What's the output of that? If we double tap on Instagram, what's the output? You like it, that's right, that's right. That's right, so it, it, I guess you, you say you like it, but you get the little heart, right? So it's a like, okay? So just by double tapping. But just like uh, our human brain programs or is programmed to react to some something spoiled or a hot finger on a stove, Instagram has been programmed to say that if you double tap on a picture, to like that picture, okay? So that's that if this happens, if I double tap on a picture in Instagram, then I get a like, okay? So that's what happens, okay? If this on the left, 
if this, then that. Okay, you see how that's kind of related to that? But in between if this and that, there's the programming piece, right? Which happens here on Instagram through the app, or if you're a human, that happens in your brain or your body, okay? And so if we could, let's check out the comment added right here. So we add a comment on Instagram, what happens here in the output? What happens on the output? And this is a little bit, I mean, it displays, that's right. We, we see our comment, right? And then what else happens like from a math standpoint? What happens when we add a comment? If you've ever been on Instagram, um, it also tells you, it displays, that's right. It also tells you what? What goes up? There's a number that goes up if you add a comment. Okay, yeah, your count. So your count goes up. That's right. So it'll it'll tell you if you've ever been on Instagram. Um, it'll tell you how many comments you have, right? If you if you see right below. So, but the Instagram app keeps track of that. Okay, so that's information that it keeps track of, based on if you add a comment to it. Okay, if you add a comment, it displays that comment, right? And put right next to your name. But then it also does some mathematics, some simple math, and it adds. A plus one to that and, and outputs that that for you to see okay um, and it also does that for the likes so you'll be able to tell how many likes you have and it keeps a running count but all of that is programmed into Instagram okay and so let's go down here on the bottom and look at a couple more these are a little bit more uh, complex okay so if we're talking about now a self-driving car again this is this is something that has to be programmed as well a self-driving car but there are also inputs on a self-driving car. If you've ever seen a self-driving car, they have a lot of cameras on them, right? Cameras and what they call LIDAR, which is a, like a light radar, okay? But it is able to scan its surroundings uh, using computer vision and this LIDAR, okay? So what happens if I'm driving in a down the street in a self-driving car and at the intersection, another car runs the red light while I'm coming down? What do you think our car is programmed to do? based on this input of, of seeing another car run the red light opposite of us. What, what do you think our self-driving car is programmed to do? And I'm actually, for this one, I'm actually gonna bring up, uh, I'm gonna bring up somebody. So Zor, are you ready to answer this question? Let's see, I'll see if we can get uh, Zora to come up here and answer. And you can just put your voice on, Zor. Can you hear me, Zor? Can you hear me, Zor? Yes. <laughs> okay. So welcome on. So what? So if a car runs a red light, then what happens with the self-driving car? If if so, if I'm in the self-driving car and I'm going down the street, and another car runs a red light, what does my car do? It stops. It stops. That's right. Okay, good job. And thanks for coming on. <laughs> um, that's right. It stops. Um, let's see here. I can. Uh... One second. I'll pull that. Uh... Let me bring it back up here real quick. Okay, that's right. And you can uh So it stops, okay, good, good. And the same thing here, and we won't go through this, but it, as the speed limit increases, actually self-driving car can see those signs on the side there, okay? And so as let's say you're driving and, and its current speed limit is 25 and it jumps up to 35, then your car here will actually speed up, 
okay? And it'll do this automatically based on this programming, okay? Or whatever its brain and programming tells it to do, okay? And, and you can see a couple more examples here with the uh, with computers, how they do things. If you, if you do some math, if you input an equation or if you upload a file, they have a specific output that they do, okay? So, but the main thing I wanted you to understand is this idea of having inputs and then some processing happening here in the brain, processing or thinking, that's the same thing. So computers and robots actually think, but they think based on how we program them to think, okay? Or what instructions we give them to think or how to behave and act based on these inputs that we have over here. And then based off of that, our program typically tells them to produce some sort of an output on this side, okay? So these concepts here, inputs and outputs, and you'll see a lot of times uh, companies will say I-O, uh, like Google has a conference, I think they call Google I-O. So, because this is a fundamental concept in computing, okay? Inputs and outputs. Um, and so, and because the programs that we write are actually really manipulating inputs and outputs, data and information, all of that, okay? So, um, very fundamental concept, but very easy to understand. Now, we want to make sure before we actually dive into any real programming that we understand the fundamental concepts, okay? Concepts that if you understand um, their foundations, it will make now, once you actually get into programming and coding, it'll make everything a lot easier because you're thinking about it from the perspective of inputs, outputs, and brains processing, okay? Language, all of that comes into play, all right? So next thing we want to do is go to uh, makecode.microbit.org, okay? And you don't have to do this right now, but I'm going to go there and I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and we're going to talk about how microbit, which is a little microcontroller um, or, or brain, a microcontroller is the same thing as a brain, how we're able to use some inputs to produce outputs that we want, okay? So I'm going to go here and... Um, All right, so you should be able to see that, okay? Uh, is, that, is everybody able to see the microbit uh, website? Okay, cool, let me go back to it. All right, so um, here we, and I like the microbit website because you can do this right in your web browser if you're on a laptop or a desktop, and I think it's, it's pretty mobile friendly as well. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you had to, you could uh, actually create a project here. But everything is done here uh, in the web browser or online. So this is why I like it. Okay. So we're going to first thing we're going to do, and you don't have to create an account. Um, and actually, if you if you visit it from the same browser, um, it'll store some of the programs that you've done or messed around with. Okay. Uh, there's some tutorials here, and one of which we'll do as an assignment. But there are other things you can do with the micro bit. Now, I recommend the micro bit, which is again this little brain or computer here because it's very simple. It's really designed for young learners, okay? Um, and it only costs about uh, $20. So you can get it um, uh, and have it in hand. And I actually have one here, so I'll show it once we actually come back live so you can kind of see what it looks like, get a feel for its size. Um, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start a new project just so we can kind of see what's happening. And over here on the left, you'll see a virtual micro bit, okay, which is cool. So you don't actually have to buy one to see how your program actually produces a result, okay? Um, but over here is where you have all of your different commands and, uh, and programming options over here. Uh, here are the basic ones up here, and then you can get into even more advanced things down here, text, images, games, functions, things of that nature, okay? So, but the basic thing that we want to look at is on start. So when you power up your micro bit, this on start kind of tells you what happens, okay? And then if you have forever, if you put some blocks into here, then um, it'll kind of happen until you turn it off, okay? So the other thing about this is if you ever get into JavaScript, which we won't be actually, we're actually going to trans transition into some Python at some point. But if you wanted to look at what the JavaScript looks like for these blocks, you can see the text here for JavaScript, which is cool. 
Uh, that way, if you're kind of right at the edge of, of the block-based programming, which is what this is when we're talking about blocks, we're talking about dragging these blocks onto our canvas here to produce a result in our micro bit, okay? Um, you can see what that looks like in a, in a text-based uh, language like JavaScript, okay? So we'll go back here. All right, so main thing I want to look at is the inputs. Remember, we were talking about inputs, okay? So these are things that happen, physically happen, and then we have to create a result. So let's say I'll pull this in here. Um, I'll pull it out here onto the canvas, and it says on button A. So when I press button A, which is right here on the, on the micro bit, something that I put in this block will happen, okay? So the input is a A button press, and then the output is whatever I put over here. And you can also change this to either button B or A and B pressed together, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go, let's see, um, we can go to basic, and this is where you have some, where you can control the LEDs, you can show certain icons, okay? And so what I'll do is I actually pull out this LED block and put it in there. You hear it click in, okay? So you see how, how easy it works, you just grab it with the mouse, drop it in there, and it adjusts. And so now you can you can actually draw if you wanted to turn these on. Okay. Um, you can actually draw what you want to display when you press the A button. Okay. So now it's saved because uh, it saves automatically. So what I'll do, and you can press stop on here, but it's actually running right now. So what I'll do is when I press the A button, it will produce an output based off of the program that we've uploaded to its brain, okay? So remember in the previous slide when I was showing you the inputs on the left side, then the brain, and then the outputs, okay? So the input is us pressing A, right? Just like if you put your finger on the stove, then something happens based off of what we put here on the canvas, and then it produces an output, which in this case will be uh, the LEDs on here or the lights, they're actually red lights will light up based on this pattern that we put here, okay? So let's try it. I'm gonna press the A button and you will see what happens. And so there you go, you press the A button and the T shows up, okay? Now we can refresh this and turn it off and let's say we wanna make it the letter I. So I'll go in here and make the letter I. And then now when I press A, the letter I comes up, okay? And so let's say, um, let, if I go back into inputs, if we looked here, um, or back in the basic actually, we can show an icon. And so if you pull, if you click on the arrow there, there are different icons already programmed into this, okay? So let's say I wanted to, uh, when I press the letter A, for it to, uh, to make the shape of a T-shirt, okay? So now, once that uploads, I press A, my input a and then it produces the output of something that looks like a t-shirt okay so you can kind of see how that works all right so once if you want it to go away just drag it away okay and it'll go away so um but there are other inputs you can work with too and this is just for information like on shake because if you shake the micro bit um it can produce an output as well okay now you may be saying like how do i uh, run a, a program where I shake the micro bit. So if you see when I pulled the shake out, it actually pulls up here and I can click that and it'll it'll uh, essentially do whatever we want it to do based on that shake. So let's let's try this again. So, so I'll put the heart icon and if I click shake or if I shake it, you see it produces the heart. Okay. We got that. Let's let's reset it so we can see that again. Now just put my mouse over it, which simulates me shaking it, and then the heart comes up, okay, based on our program, all right? Now, if you were to shake this in real life and we had this program uploaded, that's what would happen, okay? So um, so that's just a basic uh, overview of the micro bit, um, if you haven't used it in the previous session. But the main thing I want you to focus on were these inputs uh, and then some of the basic LEDs that you can do here as well, um, because your assignment is going to be based on that, okay? So um, let's see here. Let me go back to uh, uh, my PowerPoint so I can show you your assignment, okay? Let 
and then we're gonna wrap up here okay so we visited make make code.microbit.org now we're gonna dive deeper okay and all of this Remember, all this information, the slide, the pitch, uh, presentation will be available on our website uh, under the class called Hour of Code. Uh, I'll probably upload it later tonight, but it'll be available um, for you to see. But what I want you to do as your assignment, and you can do that either after this immediately or you can wait until I upload it. I want you to go to makecode.microbit.org and, um, and you don't have to create an account and and i want you to do the tutorial that's uh entitled smiley buttons okay so this is the, where we're kind of going to work with the input so we're gonna we're gonna have some inputs with uh buttons a and b that produces some output okay now it's in the tutorial section and it's called smiley buttons okay and it shouldn't take you but about uh, 10 minutes to do that and tinker around with it. And then finally, if you want to, after you've done the tutorial, you can make your own custom um, program that produces different outputs, an LED display when you press A, when you press B, and then have it display something when you shake the micro bit. So have it display uh, three different things based on the input, um, and then just kind of see how that works, okay? So again, a very, very low, a uh, very simple programming assignment, but it'll set you up for what we're going to do in the next session. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about what's next. All right. So um, I've been looking at several different tools that will be able to serve not only the young learners, but some of the older learners. OK, and I think I found it. I'm not going to say what it is, but what it'll, uh, it will allow us to use what they call Scratch, which is a is really for early uh, programmers. And then also uh, some block based programming in the middle, but then also we can get into um, actual Python programming language, okay? Uh, which is cool um, because um, Python is a language that's really exploding in popularity. It's very easy to pick up. Um, you can use it for uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and that's really why I think it's an important language, because if we're talking about the future of work and jobs, I think artificial intelligence is at the leading or the cutting edge. And if you can get a foundation in the language that they use to program uh, AI or artificial intelligence, then I think it'll really set you up for the future. Plus, you can use it to program apps, uh, build websites. It's just a, a multifunctional programming language that you can use anywhere. And so, um, so we'll have really um, learning differentiated for each group, okay? So, so make sure you tune in to that, okay? So, do is that um, any questions for me before we close out? We try to make sure we don't go past thirty minutes. Um, and um, but any questions for me? You can drop them there. Um, okay, cool, cool. Uh, so, if there are no other questions, um, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, thanks for participating, and I'll see you in the next session.